SCP-3004 Imago Imago is a Latin word meaning image, and it has a number of different definitions in today's world. Most commonly it refers to the final stage of development for an insect, but it can also refer to a psychological concept of someone's unconscious, idealized mental image of someone, especially a parent, as well as the concept of Imago Dei, the image of God. The idea that God created humans in his own image. I mention these definitions because SCP-3004 relates to all of them in some way. Of course it's going to involve insects in some way, cicadas in this case, but bringing in the other two elements of Imago is going to be particularly interesting. I've covered a lot of religious themed SCPs so far, and while most of them have been pretty weird, this is the first one involving a bug god. Let's dive in. 3004 revolves around a number of anomalous events connected to a druidic cult known as the Caitlagi, or the Singers, located primarily in Ireland during the 15th through 19th centuries. These druids worshipped a now extinct species of cicada, and their rituals were specifically connected to the cicada's life cycle. The anomalies came into play due to the presence of a deity who began to react to the singer's beliefs, and acted upon the material world during their rituals. The most common ritual of the singers that triggered these anomalies was when a child first lost their primary teeth, signifying their entrance into adulthood. These 3004 events apparently varied, but since there aren't many records of them, we only know of a couple. Artwork from the singers show cicada erupting from their facial orifices, generally causing asphyxiation. A written record discusses when a gigantic cicada appeared in the sky, believed to be a manifestation of the deity, and all who viewed it broke out in painful boils and symptoms resembling radiation sickness. The singers continued to carry out their rituals despite these negative anomalies until they were eventually destroyed by various groups that preceded the foundation, including the Vatican's Congregation for Otherworldly Acts, and the Royal Society for the Imprisonment of Abnormalcy. With the singers wiped out, the cicada deity that was drawn to them ceased all activity, and was classified as neutralized. Not much is known about this deity, but the foundation classified it as a faith-eating entity. Obviously, there's a lot more to this than that, and of course the deity was not actually neutralized, so let's continue. In an archived report written by a Foundation researcher, we learn a bit more about the Singers, and especially this deity. It turns out that the Singers weren't a fringe cult, but instead were nationwide respected members of society, spreading even into Wales and Scotland. The religion of the Singers was beginning to surpass Christianity in rural areas of Ireland, which led to the Vatican leading the charge to wiping them out. And wipe them out they did, utterly and completely, going so far as to potentially causing the extinction of the species of cicada they worshipped. The researcher speculates that the deity was a type of thought form, perhaps one of many, that exists above or below our existence. This entity was drawn to the singers, not because it was specifically related to their beliefs or cicadas, but because it was drawn to powerful beliefs in general. It acclimated itself to their beliefs and their rituals, and began manifesting in our material world through the power of their faith and the repetitions of their rituals. We've seen other examples throughout the SCP universe of the power of perception and belief such as SCP-2845, the deer, who is contained through rituals because it believes the rituals work. The researcher also says that there's no reason to believe that this entity is malevolent, but instead it spoke in the only language it knew, of blood, wood, glass, and sacrifice. This idea comes from the beliefs of the singers, focused around life and death, and imagery borrowed from Christianity and Christ's death on the cross. The researcher also speculates that the brutality of the anomalies manifested among the singers was the entity interpreting the subjugation of the Irish people at the time. 
Unfortunately, we have no records of what the singers actually thought about this deity, and whether or not they were horrified by it. All the Foundation can do is try and prevent such an entity from returning to our material world, which, as a big shock, they didn't. To recap so far, we have an entity that exists outside of our existence, is drawn to powerful religious beliefs and groups, and manifests in our world, potentially violently, through an alien interpretation of said beliefs and groups. So far, it attached itself to a relatively small religion, which was eventually wiped out, but I think you might be able to see where this is going. Currently, SCP-3004 is no longer classified as neutralized, and refers to a series of anomalous events that occur in Roman Catholic, Eastern Catholic, Anglican, and Episcopalian communities. In the modern day, we have a much better record of the variety of these events, and so one of the only things that connects all these events is the presence of creatures resembling the extinct species of cicada. These creatures appear alive, but are primarily made out of wood and glass. They are prominently involved in every 3004 event, and afterwards fly away from the event site and disappear. The Foundation speculates that they are returning to the Cicada deity, either to feed it or be given new orders. The events are carried out by normal people in their normal places of worship, making it a pretty large containment problem, and anyone that witnesses one of these events expresses a renewed interest in their faith, and they seek to convince friends and family to accompany them in the future. Individuals partaking in an event show great hesitation to stop, even if it involves self-harm, and individuals normally afraid of insects will show no aversion to the cicadas present. Also, any deaths that occur during the events will be categorized as death by natural causes, no matter what exactly happened. So what are these events then? A few examples show them to be pretty gruesome, as the cicada god doesn't play nice after all these years. One event involved the slaughter of a child bearing traditional stigmata wounds, wounds resembling Christ's crucifixion wounds. A number of cicadas were crawling out of the child's injuries, and the child was killed when the officiating priest bit out their jugular. Cicadas continued to crawl out of the child for six hours after death. Another event included the forcible removal of the priest's teeth by twelve children after which all of the children and the priest began to vomit out cicadas. The priest's teeth were later served instead of communion wafers during the service. In another event, every male in attendance who had reached puberty was violently castrated, after which the scrotal tissues were gathered and passed out to be worn around the neck. The castrated males mimicked the cry of a cicada before many died from blood loss. Cicadas were seen carrying off discarded testes. In a fourth event, a pregnant woman was brought to the altar, where she gave birth to over 60 cicadas and a stillborn infant wearing a wooden crown. The crown was promptly burnt, and the infant consumed. All very pleasant stuff. It's believed that the cicada deity uses these creatures that resemble cicadas in order to collect faith, which it consumes. With the singers, it used actual cicadas, but since the species was entirely wiped out, it created these wood and glass creatures as a substitute. The deity lives primarily above our reality, but partially intersects with ours, where it is able to feed off of human faith. It's theorized that if it consumes enough faith, it will completely enter our reality, at which point it will ultimately end our world due to the brutality of the events. The deity believes itself to be the Abrahamic god, and after the destruction of the singers, it latched on to the other familiar religion, Christianity. Since an extra-dimensional religion-eating deity is attempting to enter our reality by consuming Christian faith, the Foundation of course has a plan. If the entity succeeds and enters our reality, the Foundation will initiate protocol Damnatio ad Bestias. Latin for condemnation to beasts, a protocol that involves using SCPs and mass amnestics to erase Christianity from existence. 
This will theoretically cut off the entity's food supply, neutralizing it. We get to learn more through a report written by an MTF agent about a project called Site C Lux. Site C was a project involving using astral projection, a process in which an individual's consciousness leaves their physical body and can travel throughout the universe. The idea is that agents would use astral projection to view anomalies they wouldn't normally be able to see. Site C Lux involved using the project to check out the cicada deity. They captured one of the cicada creatures and let it loose so that an agent could latch onto it using Site C and follow it back to the god. The agent writes that where the deity lives is empty except for itself and the cicadas. It's not darkness where it lives, it's nothing, a concept not unheard of in the SCP universe, such as with Pattern Screamers. He describes the deity by writing that it's just waking up, like it's laying in bed right after waking, and the events that are happening on Earth are it just hitting the snooze button and staring at the ceiling. He doesn't want it to wake up. When the deity saw him, he describes it as hard to look at due to it appearing as too many things at once, including a big bug, an old man, a cicada on a cross, and an infinite expanse of stained glass and wood. It then begins to communicate with the agent through a barrage of thoughts and concepts. The entity doesn't understand metaphor, and it believes that it is the Abrahamic God, and it's giving us exactly what we want. It was happy to see the agent, but he wanted nothing to do with it. It asked him if he missed it, as they never actually neutralized it, but it was just hibernating. The entity then opened its mouth, and the agent tumbled into it, becoming communion wine and wafers, and it ate the agent as he endlessly fell. The agent felt a pain of his soul, as the entity prodded him for new information. He believes it doesn't get much information from where it's at, like looking at a TV with bad reception. The agent felt the entity looking at his memories of his first girlfriend and his 10th birthday, and every memory of every church service he attended, which was quite a lot as he was a theology major. The agent concludes that all he really did with Sightsee Lux was feed it more, and they shouldn't send any more agents. He thinks that if this isn't God, it might become God, because he looked around and there wasn't anything else across space and time. The final addendum relates to the decision to approve Protocol Damnasio ad Bestias as a containment scenario. The note is written by a Foundation employee who happens to be a Roman Catholic. She says that Judaism will remain untouched and Islam will only lose one of its prophets but Christianity will be completely erased. She wishes that this problem could be solved any other way, but the 3004 events are becoming increasingly common. She is honest and says that they have no idea what exactly will happen when the protocol is finally initiated, whether or not it will result in all life being wiped out anyways, or if something else will fill the gap left by the cicada deity. She admits that it's possible that the Cicada deity actually has already devoured the Christian god, and she partly relishes the idea of killing it. They're working on enacting the protocol as soon as possible, which will involve sacrificing a Roman Catholic reality bender to something called the Lions, twelve machines capable of obliterating concepts from existence. To be more specific, the individual that volunteered for the protocol is Saint Jude, one of the twelve apostles of Jesus Christ, who has lived all this time and has volunteered after fully understanding what will happen. All knowledge of Christianity known to Saint Jude will be obliterated along with him, meaning that if this does work, and he does end up saving humanity, no one will remember him. She finishes by asking God for forgiveness, as she is about to destroy her entire religion and says that if this is a sin, she'll burn along with the last saint. Truth be told, it probably wouldn't work. The entity was drawn to the singers due to the power of their beliefs, 
but since they began mingling with Christians, it latched onto Christianity after the singer's destruction. At this point, it's hard to believe it hasn't gained a bit of knowledge of other religions. And unless the protocol somehow utterly destroys the entity, it's going to move on to the next one. While our world would probably get by without any religion, the point is still that this powerful entity has latched itself onto us and isn't letting go. More worrisome still is that, based on the Sightsee report, this entity has seemingly already consumed anything else that might have existed previously above our reality, and fully believes that it's doing us a favor in the process. Of course, at least at the time of this recording, Christianity still exists, so I think it's safe to say that SCP-3004 takes place in a bit of an alternate canon, one I'd like to see expanded on. There are a couple of other SCPs connected to this entity, but they'll have to wait for a separate video. I discussed the idea of Imago at the start, the final stage of insect development, the psychological concept, and the image of God. Hopefully now you can see how well this title connects to the SCP. Ultimately though, the entity really has nothing to do with insects, as it has transcended insects. It has become God, and now they have to kill it.